Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Uh, we took a couple weeks off. Last week we were at the High Fives Charity Golf Tournament. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it was a little bit different. I know probably some people were expecting news and just got a bunch of mediocre golfers. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. I like the gun, the golf, the golf ball. The gun. air the cannon, cannon yeah. thing. Yeah, that always seems like it's going to be way easier than it is. Yeah. Probably because it goes like 400 yards, and it's hard to judge the wind right. and stuff. Anyways, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, but we're back to our typical news videos this week. Uh, and as we get closer to the ski season, these will go back to being uh, strictly weekly. You know, we may skip, skip around a little bit the remainder of August and, and into September a little bit. But as we get close to the ski season, these will be weekly. Um, and we got some pretty exciting news, you know, as we're getting closer to ski season, I feel like the news is kind of ramping back up a little bit. It heats up as it cools down. There you go. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so first topic of the week, this is one that I would venture a guess that a lot of you have already heard. Um, major news, so stuff like this gets shared all over the place. I've seen it a lot. Um, Rob Katz, the longtime Vail, Vail Resorts CEO has stepped down or will be stepping down and Kirsten or Kirsten we were debating I think that it's Kirsten anyways Kirsten Lynch will be taking over the CEO position uh, I didn't jot it down but I believe the effective date is November 1st yep um, so pretty big news Rob Katz has been I think a lot of people would agree probably the most influential person in the sport of skiing since he took the CEO role He's made some pretty major changes within the organization. Uh, Vail Resorts is in a very healthy place, so I think it's fair to say that he's done a very good job. Yeah, and it's funny. I remember when Vail Resorts was like just Vail. Right. <laughs> you know, and then adding Breckenridge was like a huge, huge. deal. Yeah. And, you know, just in, in, that, in its infancy and then seeing where it's, where it's come right. is crazy. It's pretty unbelievable. Um, so Kirsten has been with Vail since... 2011, uh, she's been acting as their chief, chief marketing officer, um, and she has also been extremely influential since she joined, since she joined the organization. Um, you know, I think it, it would be fair to argue that she's had as big of an effect, if not bigger, than Rob, um, and is probably it, you know a huge reason why they've reached where they are today. Yeah. Um, she came with a lot of existing marketing experience at major corporations, Pepsi and Kraft Foods. She was on Forbes like list of the 50 most influential marketing personnel. So extremely knowledgeable in yeah. her field. Um, and when she came to Vail, she specifically focused on data analytics and market research. Uh, and you know, I, I've read a couple interesting kind of opinion articles on this change and it's really really interesting um, how Vail has kind of shifted from a skiing company to a real estate company uh, and now you could kind of describe them more as like a an information marketing company more mm -hmm. than anything else yeah like I, I can't remember the number but they they have the credit card information of like 1.2 million people that yeah. number could be way off, but it's, you know, they have, like, your buying habits, your credit card information if you do, like, auto renew on your Epic Pass. Yeah. Like, they have direct access to an insane amount of demographic information and your buying habits and stuff like yeah. that. So having somebody like her at the helm makes a lot of sense because it's basically, like, their number one focus these days is, like, managing that data. Right. Leveraging their data and, and their connections connections to skiers like direct connections so pretty big news it'll be really interesting to see if she makes any major changes um, and I thought it was also worth noting Matt put this in the written article that Vail continues to be a very strong employer for women yeah um, then they notably have a lot of women in in high high up positions within the organization which I think is great um, so pretty cool yeah good luck to her yeah good luck uh, and then Back to more local on this, this second topic of the week, although a veil takeover or a veil change is local to us in Stonow. 
Uh, Ryan Cochran Siegel. Ryan Cochran, had, he had a great season last season. He was in the news quite a bit. Um, he has announced a switch to head products, uh, making a change from Rosignol, and he's been skiing on Rosignol for 17 years, so it's a pretty major, major change. Yep. Um, and they talked about him, a, a big reason for it is that he's teaming up with Lindsey Vaughn's former ski technician. It's amazing that that's that they can separate like a ski tech at that level. Yeah. That probably really whoever important. like the second best ski tech is. Right. You know, like has to be some distance um, behind. A measurable. I'm sorry. Right. I, what's his name? Heinz uh, Ham yeah, Hammerly. Yeah. Um, that someone's like a measurable distance. Totally. Behind him, to have that be a factor in that decision making process. Like that's yeah. incredible to me that someone could be that much more precise or, or expert level. But you know, that's what these World Cup racers are dealing with. Yeah, I mean it's just these razor thin margins. You're chasing hundreds of seconds. Yeah. So if your ski tech can shave a couple hundredths of a second off your yeah. time, like Yeah, it's that's worth it. it. That's crazy. Um, I say local because the Cochran family is local to Vermont. Uh, Cochran's is an awesome little ski area. We, we talk about Cochran's a fair amount on Top 5 Fridays. So pretty cool to see somebody like Ryan make it to the, the international stage. And we're all really excited to see what his career brings. Yep. Uh, promising, promising ski racer. So really cool to watch his development. And, and maybe, maybe that's all it takes. Right. New brand. Switch it up a little bit. New yep. ski technician. Maybe he'll be he'll be snagging podiums left and right next winter. We'll, time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, and then this is an interesting one. Third topic of the week. Um, Aspen Skiing Company has launched their own technical outerwear brand called Aspen X, uh, which you and I weren't too fond of the name, but whatever. Whatever. Uh, but it's pretty <laughs> interesting. Uh, as far as we know, this is the first time that a resort has started their own technical outerwear line. Um, and anytime this happens, I my brain starts going on wild tangents like, is that something that we'll see more of? Right. It kind of makes sense for a maid, like a big resort at least, because you need staffing uniforms and all that yep. stuff. So you're paying somebody, you know, you're, you're buying those assumably through wholesale prices, but you're still spent, you're still buying it from an existing manufacturer that's making some money off of you. Right. So even if you're, if you don't own your factory, maybe you're outsourcing the actual manufacturing, but I'm sure they're sh shaving a little bit of margin there uh, by, by manufacturing it themselves. Um, interestingly, kind of piggybacking off that idea of, of uniforms, a big reason why they did this is they were getting a lot of inquiries from guests on how they could get the Aspen uniform, which I thought was fascinating because I, I ex uh, apologies to anybody that disagrees with me, but I have never gone to a ski area and thought I would like to wear what the staff is wearing. So interesting story. My dad found an Aspen skiing company, like, you know, a nice ski coat. Yeah, had like a consignment store in Breckenridge and bought it because he liked the coat. Okay. But it had like the, you know, it All had the, the, logos the, on it. the Aspen sure. branding on it and he wore it for years. Yep. And people like literally thought he was some higher up in Aspen skiing company. Some Aspen executive. And he loved this coat and skied in it for years. So, yes, there is, <laughs> there is a market for people that want to look like... An employee of a mountain company. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I wasn't saying that to knock the outerwear itself. I just wouldn't want to be mistaken for like an ambassador. You know, like yeah. I wouldn't necessarily want people coming up to me as I was trying to enjoy my ski day, right. asking me like, "Hey, what are the lift lines like on chair 12? Yeah, I don't. Uh, and like, people did that know. to my dad all the time, and it it didn't bother it didn't bother him. And I and I'm on I'm on your side of this too. I suppose I you could have some fun with it too. Sure, giving people some false or just funny information. Yeah. Well, he always liked chatting people up, and it was a good conversation starter piece. So yeah, you know, it worked well. But <laughs> so pretty interesting. Um, I will say it's pretty snazzy looking stuff. Yeah, it's like black, pretty sleek black with like the Aspen logo on the shoulder. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think they did a really good job with the design. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like pretty much the only place you'll be able to get it. 
uh, at least in person, will be if you're in Aspen. They'll have a, right. a store right there in Aspen. Um, I certainly would be surprised if th you can't order it. If you picked up the phone and called that, even if they don't sell it online, I, I've i never really heard of anybody refusing money if you want to buy something. But who knows? Maybe it's an exclusive thing that you have to go to Aspen to get. Um, but, yeah, I'm always fascinated by stuff like this, and, and we'll see if, like, who knows? I, you know, it, to me, it's it would make sense for a company like Vail Resorts to start manufacturing their own outerwear right. and, like, even like their own skis, they buy so many rental skis. They're like, why right. not just make your own? Have a factory, right? Maybe Kirsten will do that. Maybe. Boy, you got a lot of speculation. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, and then fourth topic of the week, we have some more resort updates. Um, last time we were sitting right here, we talked about the Indy Pass, and we uh, we challenged anybody to try and ski all the Indy Pass resorts in a single season. Unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, this news probably makes that impossible uh, because they just added four resorts in Japan. And that's taken out a big chunk of your, your ski season. You just have to be committed to the travel. That's the, that's the key. You know, flying halfway around the world from where we are, uh, for, but maybe you can knock those off in four days, you know, and then it would right. really only be a week out of your season. It's true. It's still possible. Yeah. It's still possible. Uh, but yeah, the big news here is not whether or not it's possible to ski all Indy Pass resorts in a single season. It's the fact that they added four resorts in Japan, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Um, ski tourism Japan is, is something that's continually growing. Uh, I think it's been growing slowly, but I think there's more and more demand for, for going skiing in Japan. It's something yeah. that I've always wanted to do. Or not always, but ever since I've seen footage of people skiing in Japan, I'm right. like, yeah, I'd like to do that. <laughs> I want to do that. Um, and then in other ski resort news, we have some updates on Mayflower Ski Resorts, which, as a reminder, is a new resort under development on the backside of Deer Valley. Uh, they have some interesting stuff going on, specifically a a partnership with the military where they will, pr they will provide certain recreational opportunities to military personnel, which I think is great. Yep. Um, and then they're also trying to de development a, develop a partnership with Deer Valley um, so you can ski back and forth from the two mountains. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to you, I know. Uh, that is still in limbo, in negotiation. Uh, we do have some news and updates that the first chairlift at Mayflower Ski Resort is scheduled to be installed this coming spring. So a little less than a year from now. Uh, and Bob, we were talking about it before we started filming, and just keep combining resorts. I think so. I, I don't too. know. Like, you know, th I mean, it follows suit with what they're doing on the business aspect of it. You right. know, might as well follow through on the, on the physical aspect of it as well. Yeah, I'm still just waiting for, for Stowe and Smugs to get combined. I know that not everyone agrees with me, but I still think that would be really cool. Yeah. Gondola over, maybe a tunnel. I'm a tunnel. I'm you're, a tunnel guy. You're a tunnel guy? Yeah. And that would solve the issue of tractor-trailer trucks getting stuck in the notch, too. Right. Just build a tunnel. We have lots of good, lots of good so ideas. So many today. good ideas here on Top 5 Fridays. <laughs> like, think of the shipping costs that it would save these, like, freight companies. Because they yeah. they're saving some fuel by not having to go around the mountain. Maybe we could get them to chip in on the cost of construction for the tunnel. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> no one tries anything anymore. Yeah. That's my biggest complaint. We need to be city planners <laughs> or something, Bob. Uh, and that's it for news topics for this week. Um, some fun news. It was a good week to be back. Uh, and then we have our edits of the week, as always. First up, we have Tim Dershey, uh, an athlete cut from the film Stoke the Fire. Tim Durchie's always a lot of fun to watch ski. Yeah. Does a lot of big tricks in the backcountry. Uh, then we have a really interesting short short little edit uh, titled A, Mid a Midsummer Love Letter to Backcountry Skiing. Uh, fascinating little, little short film. Yeah. We both enjoyed watching it. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, kind of, you know, shows the stark contrast between what a mountain community looks like in the summer or 
specifically kind of like the the landscape, the mountain landscape, and then how it transforms into a winter wonderland. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Jack Finn, who released a kind of homage edit to the 2001 video game Johnny Mosley Mad Tricks. <laughs> uh, got some kind of classic late 90s style to it. Um, I know of Jack Finn. Uh, Jack, I don't, I don't know if you and I have ever met personally, although we've exchanged many emails back and forth over the years. Uh, I, I, as soon as I saw this, I got kind of, I was kind of the gears started turning. And interestingly, the Matrix video game came out in two thousand one. Yep. Jack Finn was born in nineteen ninety eight, so I don't think he was playing it, unless he was an extremely coordinated three year old, right. a gifted gamer. Uh, and Johnny Mosley was born in seventy five. Yep. So, pretty big range of years there so it's kind of cool to see like the younger generation right. well i mean it shows the reach and scope of johnny mosley's influence the influence of johnny mosley yeah, yeah. It's, uh, park skiing for better or for worse wouldn't be where it is today right. without johnny mosley he was an extremely influential person in those early years uh kind of came at it more from like an athleticism standpoint rather than the like counterculture right snowboard mindset uh so yeah, really cool. Check it out. Some awesome tricks in there that you don't really see anymore. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's Top 5 Fridays. Sweet. It's good to be back. Mm -hmm. Bob, you got anything fun going on this weekend? Trying out our new uh, stand-up paddle boards again, probably. Sweet. Love it. Love the sup. Sweet. Bob's big supper. <laughs> He's raising, th raising three suppers. Yeah. I'm not a very good supper, though. I have fallen more than anyone in my family. I'm big. Yeah, high center of gravity and small feet. Right, I feel like you need like a really big paddle board. I have a big paddle board. Is yours bigger than? No, they're all the same size. Yeah, so you need like a. Just get a boat. I know. And stand up. At that. I know. Stand up. <laughs> stand up boating. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we hope you all have a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed. Back to a normal top five Fridays, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.